Hello everyone and welcome to Lab 10, which covers the topic of selective and differential media. We've talked a lot about growth media in this course, and by now you know that regular growth media contains the nutrients that are required to cultivate microscopic organisms, but selective and differential media are two subcategories of growth media, which contain special ingredients that allow for certain microbes to be identified on those media. Selective media inhibits one type of microorganism while allowing others to grow. And in this way, selective media can uh, serve the purpose of allowing you to isolate and identify a specific type of bacterium. Differential media, on the other hand, allows multiple types of microbes to grow but there's some sort of ingredient in the differential media that allows them to be visually distinguished from each other, for example, by a color change. So in this lab, we are going to be exploring seven different types of selective and or differential media by inoculating them with a variety of species of bacteria. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the selective and or differential purpose of each different type of media and show you some sample inoculations as well. As I go through these plates, it may be helpful to have your lab activity printed out um, and present for you to view because there are pictures of actual plates with bacteria growing on them of each of these different seven categories. So the first type of media that we will be looking at is phenyl ethyl alcohol agar. This is a selective type of media and the reason why it is selective is because it contains the ingredient phenyl ethyl alcohol. And this ingredient inhibits the growth of gram negative bacteria while allowing gram positive bacteria to grow. So on this plate you will be inoculating E. coli, S. aureus, and E. faecalis. The next type of media is called crystal violet agar. You may recognize crystal violet as a dye that has been used in staining, but it's also useful in uh, the selective media because crystal violet inhibits the growth of gram-positive bacteria and selects for gram-negative bacteria. So in this way, it is the opposite of the phenyl ethyl alcohol agar plate. And we will again be plating E. coli, S. aureus, and E. faecalis on this media as well. The 7.5% sodium chloride agar plate is also selective. As the name suggests, it contains 7.5% concentration of sodium chloride, which is just regular table salt. And the function of that salt is to inhibit organisms that are not halophilic. In other words, organisms that cannot tolerate a high salt concentration in their presence. Specifically, this type of plate can select for members of the genus Staphylococcus, because members of that genus do uh, like a, a high concentration of salt. They are halophiles. So on this plate, you will be uh, seeing S. epidermidis, S. aureus, and E. coli. Next is the mannitol salt agar plate, or the MSA plate. And this type of media is not just selective, but it is also differential. The previous three media that we talked about were only selective. This one is both selective and differential. Like the 7.5% sodium chloride agar plate, the MSA plate also contains the same concentration of salt. And so it has the same function of inhibiting the non-halophilic organisms and selecting specifically for mostly organisms in the genus Staphylococcus. But it also contains two other ingredients. It contains a carbohydrate called mannitol and a pH indicator called phenol red. And what happens on this plate is if a halophile in the genus Staphylococcus is able to consume the mannitol and perform fermentation to generate acid, the pH in the vicinity of the growth will drop. And this will cause the pH indicator from change, uh, from, to turn from the color red to the color yellow. And this specifically happens with the species Staphylococcus aureus. We'll be looking at multiple different bacteria on this plate, E. aerogenes, E. coli, and then two members of Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus epidermidis and Staphylococcus aureus, but only one of those two staphylococcal species, that is Staphylococcus aureus, is capable of this fermentation 
that can generate acid and result in a color change. And so the MSA plate is useful for differentiating Staphylococcus aureus from Staphylococcus epidermidis. Next we have McConkie agar. McConkie agar is, like the MSA plate, both selective and differential. It contains crystal violet, which, as we know now, inhibits the growth of gram-positive bacteria and selects for gram-negative bacteria. It also contains lactose and a pH indicator. And so this means that coliform bacteria, which are defined as bacteria that are capable of fermenting lactose into acid, become pink and turn the media pink. So in other words, not only do they uh, turn the media around them pink, but the growth themselves, the cells, give off a pink pigmentation. On this plate, you'll be looking at E. aerogenes, E. coli, S. typhimurium, and S. aureus. Then we have the eosine methylene blue agar, or the EMB agar plate. This media, again, is both selective and differential. It contains dyes eosin and methylene blue, which have the role of inhibiting gram-positive bacteria and allowing gram-negative bacteria to selectively grow. But the plate also contains lactose, which causes coliform bacteria to become pink. And in particular, one species of bacteria can be especially differentiated on this plate, and that is the species E. coli because E. coli will precipitate these dyes onto the surface and cause the growth to turn this really vibrant metallic green color. You can see an example of this in the plate, the photo of a plate that is shown in your lab activity. So on this plate, we'll be growing E. aerogenes, E. coli, S. typhimurium, and S. aureus. Last but not least, we have the blood agar plate. The blood agar plate is differential because it is enriched with sheep blood. And the sheep blood allows for the growth of fastidious microorganisms, or in other words, ones that have complex growth requirements that are sort of difficult to cultivate. The differential function of the blood agar plate is that it allows you to distinguish between species that are capable of different degrees of hemolysis which is the destruction of red blood cells as they consume them through their metabolism. Alpha hemolysis is the type of hemolysis where there is some but incomplete destruction of red blood cells, and this type of metabolic activity leads to bacterial growth that exhibits this greenish halo around the outside. Beta hemolysis is when bacteria completely destroy the red blood cells in their vicinity, and this leads to a clear halo around the outside of the growth. Gamma hemolysis is actually not hemolysis at all because gamma hemolytic bacteria cannot destroy red blood cells. That's not part of their metabolic capability. So these organisms will grow on the blood agar plate, but they will not exhibit any sort of color change or halo. And if uh, you refer to your lab activity, you can see some photographs of these different types of hemolysis in action so that you can recognize them in the results. On the blood agar plate, we will be plating S. pyogenes, S. mitis, and E. faecalis. So that summarizes what we'll be looking at in terms of the seven different plates. Uh, what will happen is each plate will get inoculated in the designated section with a single line streak of each bacterium. We're not doing a zigzag pattern, it'll just be a single line streak. And the blood agar plate will get treated a, a special way uh, compared to the other different types of media. The blood agar plate will get a single line streak with the loop, and then we'll turn the needle around and we will uh, stab the single line streak into the blood in order to give the bacteria better access to this enriched ingredient in the media, and this will allow us to visualize the full effect of the hemolysis. So lastly in this video, I'm going to show you what these plates look like in real life and give you some samples of their inoculation. Okay, so here I have the seven different differential and selective media plates that we're using in this lab. We have 
the phenyl ethyl alcohol agar plate. We have the crystal violet agar plate. The 7.5 sodium chloride agar plate. Manitol salt agar. Maconkey agar. Eosin methylene blue agar. And blood agar. As you can see, I have already labeled them with the species that are going to be inoculated here. And all I'm going to do is go through and do a single line streak with the loop from our broth stock in each quadrant. And then we will incubate these and take a look at the results. I'll show you what one of those inoculations looks like. start with the blood agar plate. Blood agar plate has S. pyogenes, S. mitis, and E. faecalis. I'll start with E. faecalis. Now the way that you inoculate the blood agar plate is actually a little bit different than the way you inoculate other plates because what you want to do is do a stab line inoculation. Instead of streaking in a straight line with the loop end, of your tool. You want to do little stab marks in a line. And the reason why you do this is because you want the inoculum to penetrate the media. If the inoculum penetrates the media, then this gives you the best visualization of the type of hemolysis or destruction of red blood cells that is going on in each case. All right, so that's our blood agar plate. That one is done. I'll show you one more that we're going to inoculate with a more conventional technique. Let's take a look at the phenyl ethyl alcohol agar. Now this one, we're just gonna do single line streaks with the loop end of our tool. This one has S. aureus, E. coli, and E. faecalis on it. Start with E. coli. All right, and that one is done. Now the other ones will be inoculated in as much the same way. Um, the interesting part will be when we get to the results, which will be posted online, and you'll get to see all of the different interesting reactions that these different species have had to the differential selective and enriched media plates.